This question will look at debt that's being refinanced. Lawrence Incorporated owes $100,000 to Ontario Bank Inc. on a two-year 10% note due on December 31st, 2020. The note was issued at par. Because Lawrence is in financial trouble, Ontario Bank agrees to extend the maturity date of the note to December 31st, 2022, reduce the principal to $75,000, and reduce the, new, the interest rate to 8%, payable annually on December 31st. Present value of the new debt is calculated at $72,397. Lawrence prepares financial statements in accordance with IFRS. Prepare the journal entry on Lawrence's books on each of December 31st, 2020, 2021, and 2022. Okay, so we can see that Lawrence is getting debt refinanced or, or the, the terms of the debt are changing significantly. So we previously had debt that was worth $100,000 as it was issued at par. 10% interest. Now they're extending the note by two years. They're reducing the principal to 75,000 and they're reducing the interest rate. So what we need to know in terms of figuring out the journal entries is whether or not this is a modification of terms or whether this is a true refinancing. And the criteria for that is a greater than 10% difference in the cash flows between the old debt and the new debt. If we meet that criteria, then it's a true, true refinancing and we will take the old debt off of our statement of financial position and replace it with the new debt altogether. So essentially we're saying in essence, it's a new loan that we'll record from the beginning. Whereas if we don't meet that criteria, then we need to account for the loan as a modification of terms, meaning we wouldn't have any sort of a gain or loss through our income statement. And we would simply modify the way we are accounting for the debt partway through the, uh, partway through the term. So let's figure out if we meet this 10% criteria. And the way we're going to figure out that is we're going to take the cash flows from the new debt, which is the present value, the 72,397 that we're given in the question here. And we're going to divide that by the present value of the old debt, which was $100,000 because it was issued at par. So the difference between, so the ratio of these two things is 72%. So one minus 72% equals 28%. So we know we've definitely exceeded that 10% criteria, meaning this is going to be a refinancing. So we're gonna take the old debt off our statement of financial position and put the new debt on. So that's gonna be our first journal entry. So we're going to take away the old debt. So we're gonna say debit notes payable, note payable, old, and we're going to remove that from our statement of financial position. And it would have been on there at 100,000 because it was issued at par. So that's gone. We've taken it out. We've debited it. It's a credit balance and the debiting it removes it. Next, we're going to put on the new note payable. And we're told the present value of that is 72. 397. And so that's going to go into our liability section on our statement of financial position because we do owe that amount back. And what is the difference here? So you can see this journal entry doesn't balance. And so the, the balancing entry here is going to be a gain or loss to our income statement. In this situation, it's a gain. Gain on debt. Restructuring. Normally you would see a gain here because normally the terms of the debt are being modified to the benefit of the borrower. And that this amount is actually going to go through our income statement. So we're going to have positive amount going through our income statement. We've got the old debt off of our statement of financial position. And now we've got a liability on our statement of financial position for 72,397, which is the present value of the new debt. Okay. So the next journal entry we need to make is for 2021, and this is going to be for the interest payment. Now, we are told that Lawrence prepares statements in accordance with IFRS, meaning that we need to use the effective interest method to amortize this loan. So why don't we set up an effective interest amortization schedule here? So we're going to have the date. We're going to have the cash paid. We're going to have the interest expense. We're going to have the amortization of something and the carrying value. So let's think about this. What are we amortizing here? So we've got the debt on our balance sheet right now at 72,397, but we know at maturity we need to we need to repay 75,000. So we've actually 
the present value of the debt right now is only 72, meaning that we recognize it at a discount. So we are going to be amortizing a discount here. And the cash paid, so this is going to be the face value times the stated rate of the loan. And this is going to be the, this is going to be the um, market rate. It's going to be the carrying value times the market rate. And the discount or premium is going to be the difference. So let's start with Jan uh, December. Well, we can put the note in here. So I think it was January 1st, 2020 when we did that. So we wouldn't have anything here. And we know the carrying value of our note was 72,397. So December 31st, 2021, maybe this was December 31st here. So cash, so the amount that we're gonna pay out on the note is going to be 8% times 75,000 because the face value of the note is 75 and the, the note itself has the rate, the interest rate has been changed to 8%. So that's actually what's on the note. So this is the amount of cash that's gonna have to be paid out every period. So this is gonna give us $6,000. We're gonna have, there's two years here, December 31st, 2022. And this is also going to be 6000 So the cash paid doesn't change because it's the amount that's actually on the bond certificate or the note certificate itself. In this case, we know it's a $75,000 note and it pays out interest at 8%. So we're going to have 6000 paid out to the city each period. The interest expense is going to be the carrying value of the note times the market rate. So what's the market rate up here? Um, it says a two-year 10% note. The note was issued at par reduce the interest rate to 8%. So this is, the 10% is the market rate. We were only given the 8% rate as a preferential rate. So 10%, so, so we're gonna have 72,397 times 10%, which is the market rate, which is gonna be 7240. And the difference between those two things is gonna be the amortization of our discount. And then that is going to give us our new carrying value, which is, let's take a look, 72,397. Remember, we're gonna add the amortization of the discount because we need to get this number closer to 75,000 at maturity. So the new carrying value is gonna be 73,637. So 73,637 times 10% is gonna give us it's gonna give us uh, 7367364. Seven, so the amortization of our premium or a discount here, sorry, is gonna be 1364. So that gives us all the amounts that we need for our journal entries. So let's do December 31st, 2021. We're gonna have debit, interest expense. We're gonna have credit cash, and we are going to be increasing our note payable. So we're gonna have a credit to the note payable because we're bringing up the balance of the note payable on our statement of financial position closer to the $75,000 at maturity. So our interest expense, we can pick up all the numbers from our table here. So our interest expense is gonna be this 7240. Our cash is gonna be 6,000 and our amortization of the discount is gonna be 1240. And then we've got our next entry, December 31st, 2022. So we're gonna have the same entry, debit interest expense, credit cash, and credit note payable, because we're still increasing the value of the note. So we're gonna pick up the numbers from our table here. So we've got the interest expense is gonna be 7364. We know we're still going to pay out $6,000, and the difference is going to be the amortization of our discount, which is 1364. So 73,637 plus 1364. Yep, so we've got the note now on our statement of financial position at $75,000. It's actually $75,000 and one. So sometimes you need to do some minor rounding just to make it work, but essentially now the note would be on our statement of financial position at $75,000. 
And if we want to record the repayment of the note, it's simply going to be debit note payable because we need to remove the liability from our statement of financial position. Otherwise, it would be stuck there forever and credit cash. So we're going to have note payable 75,000 and credit cash 75,000 because we do need to settle the note at maturity at the new face value of 75,000.